of the Daimai gods himself, he wanted to enjoy pastimes in churning the ocean. Therefore, he spoke as follows. Text number 18. Shri Bhagavan Chan. That's the one in the bus? No, I think it's 19. Translation text number 18. 
the Supreme Personality of God had said, O Brahma, Lord Shiva, and other, O Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and other Brahma gods, please hear me with great attention. For what I say will bring good fortune for all of you. Text number 19. Execute Dhanava with the demons, Daitiangi and the Asuras, Tavat, Salam, Sandi, a truce, Vidi, Vidyatan, execute Kalena by a favorable time, O Kalviena. By Sukracharya, Anugihitani, receiving benedictions, Tani, with them, Yava, as long as, Va, of you, Bhagaha, good fortune, Atmanaha, of yourselves. Translation, as long as you are not flourishing, you should make a truce with the demons and asuras, who are now being favored by time. Purport, one word in this verse has two readings, Kalina and Kalvina. Kalina means favored by time and Kalvina means favored by Sukracharya. Sukracharya being the spiritual master of the Daitas, the demons, and Daitas were favored in both ways. And therefore, the demigods were advised by the Supreme Lord to execute a truce for the time being until time favored them. 
Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Jnana Salakaya Chakshurutan Jnana Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shri Vasari Gaura Bhutta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 As long as you are not flourishing, you should make a truce with the demons and asuras who are now being favored by time. So here Prabhupada says that in this verse the words Karuna and Karuna are important. Karuna means favored by time and Karuna means favored by Sukracharya. So, in this three planetary system, there is always a competition between the demons and the demigods. So, the demigods are the rulers of this three planetary system which is uh, what I call beginning from Patala to the middle planet, Bull Walker and Soul Walker. These are the areas of domination for the demigods. But by the influence of time, under the direction of Maya, sometimes they are overthrown by the demons. So when we look into the causes, there are so many causes of this uh, distress of the demigods. But uh, mainly the cause of the distress of the demigods is due to wrongdoing. This wrongdoing comes in the form of a parada. When they are found, their guru or some superior personality, they lose their powers and then the, the demons take advantage of that. And then again, they take shelter of the Supreme Lord. So here also, it's the same situation. Now when we look into the history of these demons, we realize that they are a byproduct of wrongdoing. For example, the the devas, the demigods and demons are the sons of the same person called Kashyapamuni with different wives. So the main wives of Kashyapa, he has many wives, maybe about 13. He is a big polygamist. In Africa we have people of 20 wives. Thirty wives. Mm. So he is thirteen. He is not a very big polygamist. <laughs> so amongst the thirteen wives, there are two famous ones: Aditi and Diti. So Aditi is the mother of the demigod sent by Indra, and then Diti is the mother of the demons. 
So it so happened that BT being infatuated, approached her husband at a wrong time. And her husband told her that this twilight period of the day is inauspicious. It's a time when all the ghosts, hobgoblins, who are the followers of Shiva, come out and perform their pastimes. So it's not the right time to conceive a child. But she insisted, and finally the husband consented. As a result of that, she gave birth to very powerful demons, Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu. And uh, these demons, they caused a lot of problems for the demigods. So the same father, he gave birth to, I and mean, he, his wives gave birth to both demons and the demigods. So from this point, we can understand that by wrongdoing, the consequences can be very severe. So these things were understood in very terms as well as also in other uh, communities. Like amongst the Europeans, you found that in, uh, in, in Greek civilization, it was based on two conceptions. Demis and one is Demis, which means to do that which is lawful. And then there's Tabu, which means action that is unlawful, action that could cause social disaster. So when you study advanced civilization, whether it's Roman civilization, or the Greek civilization, you found that these people were powerful because they were principled. They had, a set, they had certain rule, rules. They were governed by certain rules and principles. So that way they were very powerful. So in a similar way, here we see that uh, in Vedic culture also, people were very powerful because they were governed by certain rules. They were principled. When they broke those rules, and then the consequences were very uh, disastrous. So here we see that uh, the demigods now, because of the deviation of deity, they are suffering from the attacks of the, the demons. They can't really do their services nicely, which is to govern this whole uh, planetary system on behalf of the Supreme Lord. So from Bhakti Shastri, sorry, Bhakti Vai Bhav, we get to know that this whole creation is just another manifestation of love by the Lord to the living entities who have desires to fulfill. And then this creation, there are three three major things. There are so many things. We can say that there are so many living entities. And there are many, 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 many uh, different aspects of this creation. We see trees, we see mountains, and so many things. But according to Bhakti Bhai Bhav, there, there, there are three main things. One is that there is Jiva, or Jivas, Missouri nature and the controller of both. So the controller is the Supreme Lord. And then there is Jiva, 
who is trying to control material nature, but he is unable to do so. So when he becomes unsuccessful, he always fall back to his original shelter, the supreme personality of God. So those are the, 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 the demigods. Whenever there is trouble, they always seek the shelter of the Lord. The demons, whenever they are in trouble, they always take shelter of their, of their intelligence. They, they regroup and strategize. Prabhupada in the ninth canto, he explains that there are two types of strengths. One is called Devika, which, is, which comes from transcendence. Another type of strength is that which is organized by man to his intelligence. And then Prabhupada explains that when you compare the two, Devika or the strength that comes from transcendence always succeed. The example Prabhupada gives is that of the the, 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 the leader of Lanka, how Lord Ram attacked Lanka. Lord Ram was a prince, a crown prince of Ayodhya. He had a big army in his disposal. But he did not go to Ayodhya to bring his army. He just collected a bunch of monkeys and bears from the forest and empowered them to go across the ocean and conquer the mighty Ravana. On the other hand, Prabhupada explains that Ravana was such a powerful Kshatriya with powerful many, uh, uh, soldiers, fully equipped with modern weapons. But the monkeys, they, were, they just had trees, they, 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 they were carrying branch of trees and some stones. And Ravan was surprised. All my soldiers have been killed by a bunch of monkeys and bears. <laughs> he couldn't understand it. But they were being empowered by the Supreme Lord, Ramchandra. So in that way, in the material world, those who take shelter of the Lord when in trouble, are the devils. But the demons, they always try to organize things by their own material intelligence. So in that way, we see this throughout Bhagavatam. So here the Lord has come. He is speaking to the demigods. He is saying that this is not the right time to fight with the demons because they are being favored. They are being favored by who? By time. But also by Sukracharya. So the Lord cannot intervene with the blessings of the Brahmanas. But he is hinting that you wait until they offend the same Brahmanas. And then they will lose their power. And then you can attack them. And then it happened just like that. Exactly like that. So when they offended, the same governance, and then they lost their power, and then they, they, were, they, were, they were taken over. So that we, time, and tight, as Prabhupada used to say, waits for no man. Sometimes we think we have time, but actually we don't have time. At any moment, we can lose out in, the, in our battle with the material energy. So it's best to utilize time always in glorifying the Lord. Are you Bharati Vaipunsam? 
Udiang Astang Cha Asu Tasyati Yat Samanita Uttama Sloka Vartaya Bhagavatam explains that time, I mean the sun as it rises and set it diminishes everyone's lifespan. Like uh, in the material world people are always happy when the sun rises they say good morning good morning Good morning, good morning. There is no good morning. <laughs> good evening. But the sun is diminishing their life span. That is because they don't understand Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam says, no, this is not good morning, not good night. The sun is taking away your life. You are saying, oh, chai, good night. You see? Therefore, this human Bhagavatam, which has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his abode, accompanied by knowledge, religion, knowledge, etc., has come in Kali Yuga to help these people who are simply thinking that we are having good morning. Hmm? Therefore, says, Anato Parshamam Shakshat Bhakti Yoga Adhoksaji Lokasya Janato Vigums Chakra Sattvata Samitam That the miseries, Anato Parshamam, miseries that are superfluous to us. The miseries that we do not invite can be directly mitigated by the linking process of devotion service. Therefore, the learned sage Vyasadev compiled this literature, Shimad Bhavatam, which is in relation to the Absolute. Why? Because Yashyam Vaishwa Mahanayam Krishna Paramapurusa Bhaktir Upayati Pumsaha Soha Moha Bhayapaha By giving oral reception to this Bhagavatam, what happens? Loving devotion service to Krishna will sprout up from our hearts and then when it comes up it Extinguishes the fire. Which fire? So, so, so called Moha Bhayapaha. The fire of lamentation, illusion, and fear. Yes. So, the demigods who were also frustrated after being taken over by the demons, they were feeling this fire. So in the in previous verses they've been praying to the Lord, chanting many beautiful slokas. Now the Lord has come with the solution. He's telling them the demons right now they cannot be conquered. They are unconquerable. Why? Because they are favored by time. You just wait until time time unfavors them so in that way the Lord is the only one that can give the solution to the problems of this material world otherwise people are simply thinking good morning, good night but if there is no good morning there is no good night the sun is just this decreasing their lifespan. But the devotees understand this. Yes, Uttamas look over there. That except those who spend time, utilize his time, glorifying the Supreme Personality of God, otherwise, as the sun rises and sets, it 
diminishes everyone's lifespan. So in that way, this is the understanding that in this creation, these jivas, the achievers us, material nature, and the controller, the Supreme Lord. But unknowingly, we are thinking that we are in control of material nature. Or we can enjoy material nature as much as we can. But it's not like that. This material world is just a blessing to us by the good Lord. But we are not in control. Prakriti, the material nature is in control, not us. But it seems as though we have some control. According to Lord Krishna and the Bhagavad Gita. So here, the truth that the Lord is suggesting is a compromise in the most undesirable situation. One has to understand what is to be done, what is not to be done. That is pure intelligence. Lord Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita that intelligence, immortal goodness, is meant to help us to understand what is to be done, what is not to be done, what is to be feared, what is not to be feared. So here he is advising the demigods. Just like we see also in the Shimad Parvatam in the Ten Canto, uh, during the, the, the wedding procession of Vasudev and Devaki, Suddenly, an omen spoke from above and said to Kamsa, who was happily uh, accompanying his sister in his sister and brother in law, that you're such a fool. You are busy entertaining these people, but the first, I mean, the eighth child of, the, of this sister of yours will kill you. He was surprised, he was shocked. Immediately, his so-called affection for his sister went out of his system. He said, huh? The eighth child of his sister will kill me. Let me kill her now. <laughs> you know. So this is a mystery because the demons and materialistic people, they think that this creation is for me. And life is about me. It's me. Oh, a child will kill me. Immediately, he drew his sword. And Vas, uh, Vasudev, who is another diplomat, said, no, 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 come, sir. You're such a great hero. The whole world seeing your glory is a pious king. How can you do such an abominable act, killing a woman? You know these things very well. Don't believe in some omens. Don't be. It may not happen. If, it, if, if she does give birth to children, I will bring all those kids to you. And then you can do as you please. Well, comes our specified. Oh, Vasudev, you're such a, an honest uh, person. I really trust your words. And then later on, Devaki gave, gave birth to the first child, the second child, the third child. And Vasudeva was just taking them as an offering to come, so Kamsa was killing them. So this is the risk that Vasudeva took to save his wife. And then later Krishna appeared. And then he requested that he be taken to uh, to Nanda and Yasoda's place, Nanda Bhavan, across the Yamuna. 
Maha, to Mahava forest. And then Vasudev brought a baby girl. Immediately, when Vasudev placed that girl on the lap of Devaki, she started crying. Hmm? It's a plan of the Lord to awaken Kamsa. All immediately Kamsa had a voice and then he came. He was with the intention to kill that child. But, of course, the child slipped from his hand and told him he was such a fool. The child that was going to kill him was born somewhere else. So this is time now. We can't really control destiny or time. So and then, or well, before that, Devaki tried three, three, three things according to Prabhupada. One is called Dana, which means uh, repression. She tried to directly oppose Kamsa. That you have killed so many of my children, leave this one. This is a baby girl. It's not a boy. You cannot be killed by a, uh, a girl. That is repression. And then another thing that she tried, Prabhupada says, she tried uh, a compromise. Shama, that she said, actually, it's not your fault that you have killed my children. It, it, it was due to providence. And that didn't work also with Kamsa. He was red angry. He was red hot with anger. So then Devaki tried the third thing. It's called Dana, asking for charity. Please give this child to me as a gift. Don't kill her. That didn't work also. So when Prabhupada explains that in politics, these are tactics. That if you can't conquer the enemy, and then you, you come to a compromise. So we see that also with the, the demigods that they were advised by the Lord to adopt to, to another means which is truth. Let's get together, let's work together. But uh, it was just a trap. So then these, these, uh, these demons agreed and then the net, uh, I mean the ocean was churned and then the nectar came out. This is a very amazing lila. The Lord incarnated more than once. So, the incarnation of the Lord that brought forth nectar was called Danvantari. He came out of the ocean with a, in a beautiful form holding this jar of nectar. So the demons, because they were in front, they immediately grabbed and snatched the nectar from him. Oh, the demon, the demigods were said, oh, we've been working so hard, this nectar now is being taken by the, the these demons. Demons are very agile. Wow, we have cheated this, the, 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 these demigods. And then suddenly, another incarnation came into the scene, Mohini Murti, very beautiful. And she looked at these demons. Oh, you guys, you're so strong and handsome. Would you like some eye association? She said, oh, yes, try. <laughs> so, yeah, it's cool. What is that? Oh, that's nectar. Oh, I would like to have nectar. Yeah. Give that nectar to me. Oh, we can. I said, David, you can have nectar. And she took the nectar. She said, okay, you sit in cheers. I will serve you this nectar very nicely. And the demigods, because they were enchanted by Mohini, they said, you know, I ask you like how we, we are so obedient when it comes to prasadam. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then she bypassed them and went to the demigods and distributed nectar. Suddenly they realized we've been cheated. So that's how the Lord, uh, cheap materialist, on behalf of his devotees. Yes, he cheated them. 
Before that, he appeared as Kurma to be used as a, what they call a pivot for Mandala Mountain. So the Lord, to save his devotees, he takes so many incarnations. Bhavarati Esha Sakvena Lokan Vai Lokan Bhavanaha Lilavataru Anuratu Deva Tilam Naradishu Shmad Bharatam 1, 2, 3, 4 explains that says Lok, Loka Bhavanaha the Lord of the universes maintains all the planets in doing so he assumes many incarnations and performs pastimes to reclaim those who are in the mode of pure goodness so the lord is always assuming incarnations whenever his devotees are in trouble to deliver them or reclaim them. So we see in this Lila also he has come after being prayed for by the Roman gods and he's telling them join forces make a truce with the demons now they are favored by time and the Brahmanas of the Brigu dynasty headed by Sukracharya you cannot conquer them but later on when the time is right, you will conquer them. So in that way, he is Loka Bhavana. He is the maintainer of his planets. So when one understands that, he can gain peace from the pangs of material existence according to Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. So our request to end here. There is some, maybe 15 minutes, if you have some questions. Okay. Let's take the Mataji first. <laughs> Hello. Uh, this all started when Indra became popular. He was arrogant and he offended the So. Indra was puffed up and he was arrogant and he offended Durvasa and it all started the distress. So what leads one to this stage of arrogance or puffed upness? How can one um, avoid that situation? Thank you very much for your question, which is very beneficial to all of us because we suffer from the same disease of the demigods. According to Queen Conti, she says that the, the reason for arrogance and pride is good, bad, education, and wealth. So the result of that, uh, it becomes very difficult for someone who is intoxicated by good, good, bad, good education to fully surrender to Krishna. Therefore, Krishna is called Akenjina Gocharam. He becomes a property of those who are impoverished material. So, the demigods, because of their powers and uh, beauty and all that, sometimes they, they become overly intoxicated to the exclusion of great personalities that is uh, common amongst the conditioned living entities. That when we are successful, we identify, just like there is a story, in Greece there was one temple in Delphi. So this temple was run by Pujaris who were ladies. But these ladies were empowered, they were able to tell how a person will fare in the future. Many, many great 
powerful Roman kings like Adrian, they went there to know how they will uh, succeed in the future, even Alexandra. So one king came. He was coming from one country called Lydia. He wanted to know also, or he thought that he could attack Persia, but he wanted to, to know if it was the right time. So one of the ladies there gave a very good advice that if the king goes to Persia, upon crossing the river, his army will be destroyed, but he will come out alive. So he thought, oh, I will come out alive. That means momentarily the patience will obstruct me, but I will win. And he immediately uh, organized his army and started for the journey to Persia. But when, when he came to when he came to cross the river into Persia, the Persians knew he was coming there. They, they destroyed his army and arrested him. Before that, he was visited by wise men called Solon to impress him about his wealth. He opened his treasure house to see all the gold and the diamonds that he had collected in the course of his time. Solon didn't say anything. This king was annoyed. He said, are you really saying, are you not impressed by my success? Solon said, no, because you are still alive. I do not consider you successful. If you die successful, if you die owning this world, and then I will consider you. So when he was caught by the Persians, the king of Persia decided, oh, this rascal has been harassing my country for many years. I want to punish him nicely. Build a fire around him. We want to do a barbecue of him. Uh, in South Africa, they call Bri. Uh, we're going to roast him alive. Uh, so then they built, they put fire, a uh, wood around him from his, his feet up to his chest. So then, the fire was lit from his toes. As the fire started burning, he remembered, I was such a puffed up fool that Solon told me that I could lose my wealth at any given moment. Because he told him, life is like a marathon. We are still running. If we are successful today, do not celebrate and think that you are a successful man because you still have more years to live. Anything can happen. So he started calling very loud, Solon, Solon. And then the king, another king was thinking, who is this Solon? And he told his soldiers, put up the fire, I want to hear from this king. Who is this person that he was calling at his moment of death? So this king explained, I was such a fool. I thought I had conquered so many countries. I was successful. I invited a wise man to my kingdom, not to listen to him, not to receive wisdom, but to show off how successful I was. And he told me, as long as I'm alive, I'm not a successful man. A successful person is a person who dies successful. Now I'm remembering him. This king said, he was right, I'm also Punishing you because I'm thinking I'm the conqueror, I'm the, I'm the lord of, of Persia. You are my enemy. Actually, no, no one is my enemy. It's just your mind. I may also end up in the same situation. Please take me to this salon. I want to learn this wisdom from him. So in that way, by one instruction, Salon delivered two kings from Maya. So in that way, when we take instructions from the Lord, and representatives of the Lord we will be able to uh, bring about solutions to the problems of this world. But if we are puffed up and then it's very difficult to take advice from uh, pure devotees 
uh, great personalities and then we will miss out. So that's the reason why Indra offended because he was thinking of his success which is temporal. Okay. No more questions. Thank you very much for tolerating me. Hare Krishna. Jai Shiva Prabhupad K. Grandra Shiman Bhavatam K. a long day. Three classes.